Hey everybody, uh, wanted to do this little kind of welcome and introduction to the book and to our first week's of us, uh, assignments. Uh, first chapter of the book about defining leadership, what it is, what it isn't, what, what exactly are we talking about and when we talk about leadership and how it's different from kind of current popular conceptualizations, how it's different from just other types of power and influence. So uh, to kind of set the stage, I want to give you a little story. Uh, not too long ago, I had a, a memory. I, I was getting ready for this class, and it made me think of it. But about a year ago, we were getting ready for a commencement, graduation ceremony at my university. Uh, we were at the Civic Center instead of on campus. And so as something different, uh, we didn't kind of exactly know uh, what, the, what the rules were, how it was all going to work. So anyways, when it came time to line up as faculty to go into the graduation ceremony, commencement ceremony, I happened to be the first faculty member, and I was standing right behind the faculty marshal. And so as we're walking down uh, to the ceremony, this being new, a new place, kind of a new seating arrangement and everything, I asked the faculty marshal, you know, well, how's this going to work? You know, I'm going to lead the line in, obviously, but when it's time to leave, you know, we're going to turn around, we're going to keep going, am I going to lead it out or back in? And the faculty marshal kind of said, uh, well, you're the leadership guy, shouldn't you be in the back? To begin with, okay, let me pause that story right there, and I'm sitting out here to kind of uh, clue you in as, as to where I'm going with this. So uh, in, my, in my little pause, in my kind of little side story, um, I'm sitting out here in front of our, our bike ride trailer. One of, the, one of the things that I do with my undergraduate students, which we began doing in 2013, uh, to give the students the opportunity to practice leadership and teamwork and all of the associated skills instead of just in the classroom and with traditional uh, classroom activities, projects, I wanna do something different. And so we started doing long distance bicycle rides. And by long distance, as you can see right behind me, we ride across Texas. Uh, we ride from the border of Mexico to the border of Canada. Very big, complex projects. Uh, lots of planning, lots of organizing, lots of training, lots of on the road decisions as we're riding along. So as, as when the faculty marshal uh, mentioned that to me, well, shouldn't you be in the back? Kind of made me think back to, uh, to my bike ride. And so when I'm with college students, I'm usually training new ones every year. And so not a lot of experienced people. I'm, I'm usually the most experienced person on these rides. Uh, when we're out riding, a lot of the times I find myself in the back. I do find myself in the back. And I do in situations where the road is wide open, there's not a lot of danger, you can see for a really long way, maybe we get spread out a little bit because we don't have to be so tight and compact. But if there's a problem with any of my cyclists, being the most experienced and being the best at changing tires and diagnosing problems with the bikes, I like to be in the back so that I can catch up to them and help them out. In those situations, being in the back is the place to be. But there are other times where I need to jump out front. And if you can kind of think in your mind what those might be, it, it's times when there's danger, it's times when there's uncertainty. So if we don't exactly know where we're going, I like to be the one out front. If there is danger, I don't want to ask my people to do something that I wouldn't do. So I will jump out in front and have the people behind me. Um, there are other times where I'm, I'm kind of thinking of the story, the, the last full ride across Texas, last, last year's ride, uh, we rode from Kwana to Big Bend. There were sections of that ride, uh, particularly down, uh, kind of getting toward, down toward Big Bend, down in oil country, where I didn't feel safe. Even I didn't feel safe on the roads, but some of the other people did. We, we did have some experienced cyclists on that team, and they said, well, let us ride this. And then uh, I was able to take my group, and we were able to jump ahead and ride a different section. So, you know, leadership, teamwork, it's all of us working together in pursuit of a common goal. Um, all of that, you know, it, it, it's all of us working together, uh, whether I'm in front, whether I'm in back, whether I'm in the middle, whether I let others make the decisions. It, it all just depends on the situation. Okay, so with my, now let's unpause and go back to the faculty marshal story. So as we're walking down and I asked, and I don't wanna say I was reprimanded, but when, uh, when it was kind of mentioned, well, why are, why are you not in the back? And I said, well, sometimes I should be in the back. Sometimes as a leader, we should be out front, okay? And it's kind of up to us as the ones uh, who are leaders to assess the situation and figure out where and when we need to be and at what times. So in that situation, I kind of said, well, hey, we're going into an uncertain situation. 
I, I, will, I will take on the burden of being in the front to figure this out. So, you know, as we go through this, this first chapter, leader, follower, situation, there's no simple recipe for effective leadership. Um, it, 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 the situation drives a lot of it, but then it also depends on who your people are. And so if we were one, with a bunch of beginners out on those roads that I didn't like, we probably would have skipped it. But we did have people who were confident and comfortable and they were able to step up and do it. So as, as, as a leader, as the one in charge and working with others to accomplish unusual and exceptional things, it's up to you, it's up to us, to figure out what the appropriate way of getting stuff done is in that moment. Uh, so again, this could be a good class. I think this stuff is kind of one of those things that's always a good refresher for everybody to have, but uh, particularly MBA students, young professionals, maybe mid-career professionals, even those folks who've been doing this for a long time, just kind of to formally sit down and think about this and study it, make sense of it, and hopefully change our uh, kind of our models and understandings. Sometimes it's going to be easy to see, you know, like in, in a line of bike riders uh, out on the highway, where are you in the, in the line? Uh, that's going to be easy to see. Other times at work, that's going to be a little harder to figure out. So uh, again, I'm excited about this class. We'll play with it a lot of different ways. I'm hoping to give a little kind of, I don't want to call this a lesson or a sermon or whatever it is, uh, but we'll do these throughout the term uh, to kind of make the, make the ideas real. If we, if we were in person, uh, we'd be able to share and kind of give these stories. So that this will be kind of the, the virtual way of doing that. So uh, get, like I said, I've been looking forward to this for a long time. I uh, hope it's a valuable experience for all of us. So that's it. Bye-bye.